challenges facing any homesteader or woodlot owner, small farmer, is getting your product to market. Now, this winter we're going to cut some saw logs, some stud wood off of our properties, but where we're going to be cutting is about two, two and a half mile north of here, and uh, the roads going in there are not the best. It's a long ways to plow a road once you get snow on and hard to get trucks in to get at the logs. So we're going to resort to an old trusted and true technique of sledding logs out. Now this is part of the set of sleds that we have to work with. We're missing a few parts and so you good folks are going to get the chance to see us build build some pieces for it. One thing we're missing, we're missing a front roller that goes between these sleds here. Now this is what's called, commonly called a bob sled. There's a set of front runners, there's a set of back runners. We're missing one back runner. We're going to build one of those. Uh, between the runners, there's a cross bunk. We're going to be replacing one of those. And uh, there's a little bit of, uh, actually a whole lot of woodworking that has to go to it. We're going to take break the chainsaw out. Saw out some yellow birch. Yellow birch is an extremely dense, hard hardwood. And that's what, uh, that's what these sleds would have been made of originally. These sleds belong to my grandfather or his uncle. Uh, they've been here on the farm for as long as I can remember. And unfortunately, a couple of the pieces has gone downhill. A couple of pieces has, has been misplaced over the years. But we've got this much of the set. And so we're going to, uh, we're going to construct the replacement pieces we need. And if any of you have ever been around old barns, you've probably seen the remainders of these sleds and wondered how they went together, maybe wondered how, uh, how they were used. If you follow this, uh, this series of videos, you're going to get the chance to see these sleds being uh, repaired, put together, and operated. All right, so here we have the hardwood log that we're going to be using. This is a big junk of yellow birch. As you can see, this is one of the cross bunks. Now these, uh, these hardwood cross bunks will last forever until they get exposed to moisture. So this one get into a little bit of moisture underneath the barn and she's, she's pretty much rotted away here. So we're going to replace this piece here. What we're going to use, we've got one of these jigs here for going on the chainsaw. This is just a beam cutter and it clamps the chainsaw in here. This is the board we're going to run it on. Fasten that board down on the log and run the chainsaw through that. Uh, we would normally use our bandsaw mill but the bandsaw mill is apart right now being worked on. So what we've got to do here, we need five feet for the bunk and we need nine feet for the runner. So we're going to take the runner off the butt end of the log. We're going to take the bunk out of this piece right here. If you look at the way that the bunk is made here, this bunk has an inch and three quarter or two inch hole here. This is where the kingpin goes down through. There's also two holes drilled here before it's cut open. And these allow these metal plates to set in here. These plates just keep the wood from wearing where the, the pins from the starts comes up here. So we're going to square it out. We're going to drill two holes here, two holes on that end. We're going to drill a hole for the kingpin and then we're going to continue to shape. Now as you can see this tapers a little bit here. It's only about probably six and a half by eight right here and it goes out to a full uh, eight and a half or nine by nine here in the center and then this crowns a little bit so this steel plate here is on the top this is where the rocker is going to set on that's what the logs will be will be laying on when the sled is complete the rocker sets on here it's got a steel plate that wears on this one here the kingpin drops down through both but this tapers this way as well it crowns up in the middle. This gives you more clearance on the roadway so that uh, your your sled can run over a little bit more in the way of snow. Uh, stumps, if they were hauling on roads where, where the roads weren't stumped out real well or anything like that, 
So there is a little crown to the middle of this and it also crowns this way. It drops down and that allows the rocker to swing free on the top of the cross bunk. So a whole lot of stuff to consider while we build it, but uh, we're going to go at this next. Okay, so we're able to junk the log up here. Now, we were able to cut out this piece here that had the, the knot on it. The log is just long enough to allow for what we're going to do. So looking at the end, we've got a little bit there from the knot, but that's, uh, that's going to be trimmed out when we get the bunk. So this five foot section right here is going to give us the cross bunk out of this piece. And now this section here is going to give us the slabs for, oh, we're probably going to be able to get two, maybe three runners out of this. So our next uh, action here, we're going to put the jig on the chainsaw here. We're using a 500i steel. Now this, uh, these chainsaws here, there is a ton of power to these. These are actually a fuel injected model of the steel and that's about an 80, 82 cc saw. Lots of power for ripping a, ripping a hardwood log and uh, super fast. These, uh, these saws are really impressive. I've, uh, we've had this one for a year now and I am just really, really impressed with the, the power that this saw puts out. Like I say, fuel injected, there's no carburetor on it. First time we've ever owned a chainsaw that didn't have a carburetor, but this one really, really does the job in big wood. Okay, so now we're set up to start doing some sawing. Now this board is rigged up to be the exact width of that jig that we have. That's, uh, I believe, one of the timber tough that they sell on Amazon. I had a Grandsburg years ago. I'm not sure where it went to. But now we had to, because of the curvature of the log, we had to put a couple of shims underneath so that this board sets flat and even at the start. So we've got the... Uh, jig mounted on the chainsaw here and once again I apologize for the lighting because it's very sunny and the sun and the snow is uh, is really making everything dark here so we've got this mounted on the saw we've set this out just enough so that when the saw rotates down we're just going to get a neat slab off the side I'm not worried about getting in to the full size of the flat that I need right now. All I want to do for starters is just get a flat off the side of that log and then we can work from there. Keep setting the board and the jig over to do what we want done. <laughs> So now that gives us a place to start from. We can fasten the board on the flat face now. And we'll take the other two sides off. And then we'll work down the back. Okay, so now we've got the board set in place. We've measured this. So that the chain is going to run just inside the bark here because we want to start it with about a 10 by 10 timber. So this should give it to us here. The chain is going to run just, just in the edge of the bark there. Of course, the edge of the vehicle is going to be shaped and rolled down. 
So now we'll set the chain saw on here. We'll see that this is uh, the barb is going to come just at the edge of the bark. So now we're going to make a second cut. <laughs> chainsaw mills you have to watch for that vibration just slow your speed rate down a little bit and uh, you know let the, let the okay so here we have the timber we flatten now three sides we're not going to take this fourth side off because we don't need to we're going to set the cross bunk on here now we're going to get this shaped and most of this wood that's left here on this side is going to be taken off anyway in the process of uh, replicating the old bunk so this is as far as we're going to go with this. Uh, this is the end of video one. Video two is going to be us shaping and actually making the cross bunk, getting it drilled out, getting the irons fixed to it, uh, replicating the old bunk the way that the original was. Uh, then we're going to do a video. We're going to take this log here. We're going to saw out the runners for the sled. This one will actually turn out probably three runners, two at least, and uh, we'll just set the other slabs aside because we may need to repair another sled at some point in the ro down the road. So, with that said, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for video two, which is going to be shaping and uh, finishing the cross bunk. Video three is going to be doing the runners, and then you're going to see us taking these sleds to the woods, putting them to work. Uh, we're going to have a couple of videos in there of the actual logging process, getting the logs hauled out. You're going to see how the corner bind chains, the bridle chains that worked as brakes on these sleds, how all of that is hooked up and uh, used. I haven't found a video on YouTube yet that shows how the actual chains and stuff, the stuff were set up on these sleds, the way that the old timers used them for moving logs, because they would put you know, 40, 50, 60 logs on one of these logging sleds, and you look at the actual size of the uh, the runners and the timbers, and you wonder how in the world they done it, but they did. Uh, my father, grandfather, right on back to uh, the first of our family that came here in 1820 to this farm. They used these sleds for moving logs around, and that's the process I want to show you in this set of videos. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, stay tuned and you'll see this whole process all come together and uh, we'll see you on the next one.